I'm Nicole Meadow, and I'm a registered dietitian and board-certified lactation consultant, and also a mom of two adorable children who are 6 and 11, and I am here today to talk to you about some tips to help you with your personal breastfeeding journey. We are here today live in our honest breastfeeding room, and we know it's breastfeeding month. It's August, and every year in August, we celebrate breastfeeding month, and at Honest, we support the American Academy of Pediatrics um, recommendations for exclusive breastfeeding in the first six months of life. So with that, I want to share my tips for um, your personal breastfeeding journey. We're going to talk a little bit about what you can do if you're pregnant. So if you're in that stage, we'll have some tips for you. And then also what you can do in that first month, because a lot of moms, they have trouble during that first month and it can be really challenging. And if you can get through that, then you can really meet your own personal goals. So does that sound good? All right, let's get started. So during pregnancy, there are, there are a lot of different tips, but these are really two that I find to be really, really helpful. And one of them is to really be educated about this new journey that you're going to begin. So get signed up for a breastfeeding class as early as possible. And bring your partner, bring your parents, bring your friends, bring anyone with you who's really going to be involved in your breastfeeding journey. And in that breastfeeding class, you'll learn about what's normal, what's not normal. You'll learn about breastfeeding mechanics. You'll learn about latching your baby. You'll learn about all of the different components of breast milk because this is a big change that's gonna happen to your body. And I mentioned about bringing all of those different people in your life because a lot of people have different views about breastfeeding. And so wrapping in your supportive members of your life with you so that they can learn as well will help develop that support system that you're really going to need when you uh, enter into this journey and to help you meet those goals that you set for yourself. So that's one tip. Something else is to develop a birth plan. So in a birth plan, you and your partner can really outline all of the different things that you want to happen on that big day. So for example, things like where you want the birth to happen. Are you going to have a home birth? Are you going to be in a hospital? Do you want to have a doula? Do you want to have an OB? Do you want to breastfeed right away? Do you want to have medications? How long do you want to wait to have medications? All of those really big important decisions, first of all, you can talk about early on because sometimes you don't even realize that you and your partner have different ideas. So get that, you know, get that conversation going and get it written down. Because when the day comes, if you haven't talked about that, you might be faced with some decisions that in the moment are really hard to make. Um, and get everyone involved. Let your doctor know that you have a birth plan and have him understand what that is. And same with anybody else that's involved, um, your family members and all of those different people. And then also just know that things might change. So just be ready for that change. So taking it day by day, just as you enter into this journey of parenthood, which can be challenging, just having done this for a while now, I say that to myself every day, day by day. And just know that sometimes you might have this plan in place, which will help you with those unexpected happenings, but just be prepared that, you know, you might have to bend and flex a little bit. So we've covered a couple of tips for pregnancy. But what can you do when that little, ugh, that little bundle of joy arrives? What can you do during that time? So something that's been shown to really help with newborn, um, with breastfeeding right away, is breastfeeding as soon as possible. So getting that baby to mom right after birth and getting that baby skin to skin and breastfeeding as soon as possible, hopefully within that first hour. So something that I've told this story to some folks around the office and they were kind of amazed when I talked about this, but putting the baby to the mom's belly, skin to skin, the baby's actually born with reflexes where they can actually find the breast on their own, completely unassisted. So being able to go through these natural instinctual things that all mammals can do and find the breast is something that you might be able to experience with your baby if you want to have that option. So the baby will open their eyes and they'll go through this quiet alert state, they'll start licking, they'll start moving their hands and they'll actually bob their head and they'll move over to the breast on, and latch on their own. So if that's something that you wanna explore a little bit more, even talk to your doctor or a lactation consultant about, 
it's a really exciting experience. So breastfeeding within that first hour is a, uh, an important thing for baby and remaining skin to skin. So that contact between mom and baby releases hormones and it has benefit for both mom and baby. Um, baby's gonna feed a lot. So understanding that in those first few days, in that first few months, that baby feeds a lot. And why is that? So something that's important to know is that baby has a really small stomach, okay? So in those first couple of days, baby is drinking something called colostrum. That's what your breast will produce. So, or your partner, I'm not sure who's watching out there, hello. <laughs> but baby is going to produce colostrum and it's this thicker yellow kind of substance. It's called liquid gold because it has different nutritional types of properties. Um, it's higher in immune properties, it's higher in protein, and it's all baby needs. So in those first couple of days, your baby will feed a lot, but only a little bit is going to come out of your breast if you ever try to express anything from your breast. And so we have a nice little representation over here as to how babies, um, how much your baby might be getting, because a common concern is, why is my baby feeding so much? Am I not producing enough? But it's actually because babies, do, their stomachs are really small and they need to feed very frequently. So let me take you over here. And we have different types of foods that um, represent baby's stomach size. This is also available on our blog. So you can read um, up on our blog. We have a lot of different information in addition to the birth plan that I talked about. But here we have a cherry, which represents the first day and it's about a teaspoon. That's all babies really need. So if we can see here, we have a cherry, which is day one, and then represented here, we just put a little milk in this bottle to show you, it's really just a tiny little bit. That's all that baby needs at each feeding. So that's day one. At about day three, and no, every baby and every mom is gonna be different. This is a radish, and this is a little less than an ounce. So every mom will have their mature milk, so we talked about colostrum. Mature milk comes in at different times for every mom, but you'll see that start to come in when the colostrum passes through and baby is feeding more. Anywhere day three, day four, some moms day two, but babies are feeding and getting a little bit more, their stomach is growing, so this is about a little less than an ounce or an ounce. And this is at about uh, two weeks, a week or two weeks. We have it about an ounce and a half here, the size of an egg. So their stomachs are growing, they're growing, they need a little bit more, of course. And here we have a plum, a suat. And we have about three ounces. And this is when baby is about a month old. So you can see in all of these cases, baby is still feeding eight to 12 times per day. Their needs increase, of course, because they're getting older and they need more nutrition and calories, but they still need to feed frequently. So that's really, really important. And one thing, just know, nursing might be natural, but it's still challenging. And a lot of moms go through this especially that second night, that second night can be super challenging. So once you just know and you have preparation for what some of this early nursing can be, and you can expect some of these types of challenges, it makes it a little bit easier to get through it. So baby's feeding a lot, you see babies start to move around, their mouth is, they're licking their mouth a little bit, that shows you that they're ready to feed. But positioning is key. You wanna make sure that baby's going to get a good latch and they're going to position. So, kind of a little funny, but we have a baby in the office, a, a fake baby that we use to teach our customer service department when we're teaching them about breastfeeding and things like that. So I'm gonna welcome you to Baby Sam. So here is Baby Sam. Sometimes Baby Sam is a girl, sometimes Baby Sam is a boy. We like to dress Baby Sam up. So one thing that's really important with latching is that um, number one, it has to be comfortable for you. So there's a difference between tender nursing nipples, which can happen. So if they're just a little tender, know that that's normal in the beginning, that a lot of women have tender nursing nipples. If there's a lot of pain, if there's damage, 
you please need to reach out for help to a healthcare professional or a lactation consultant or your local La Leche Week. So there is a difference between that. But some pain and, you know, you haven't been used to having a baby feed on you 8 to 12 times per day for, you know, however long it takes them to feed. So a little bit of tenderness and um, chuffing and things like that might be normal. So one thing to note is that early positioning that we talked about where baby is lying on their tummy and finds the breast, many women, that works for them to continue feeding. So having baby like this, baby is tummy to tummy and they continue to work in this biological position. That's a very lovely position and it works for many moms and babies. But important things about positionings to learn and to know is that the belly and the the belly button should remain belly to belly with mom and baby. That really helps in any position that they're in. So keep that in mind. In addition, once you have baby in that nice belly to belly position, you wanna ensure that the baby opens their mouth really wide and that they're not just getting the nipple in their mouth. You want them to get that whole dark area, the areola in their mouth and that their lips, and now I'm gonna look kind of funny right now, but, and that their lips if you've ever heard that fishy lip kind of thing, that their lips are flanged. So you're getting that around the areola. So we're getting fish lips too. So those are just some basic tips on positioning and latch in the early days to really establish that nice pattern. And if you're having trouble, if you're in pain, if it's not working for you, have a support system and know when to reach out. It's really important to have check-ins with a lactation consultant or a pediatrician, watch their growth, um, know from your pediatrician about their pees and poops. You really wanna make sure what's going in comes out and there are different charts to, because the, the poop is gonna change in color, the poop is gonna change in frequency, and we wanna make sure that we're looking at that as well. And then I think the last thing that I really wanna talk about and to ensure that you meet your breastfeeding goals is to set yourself up with a support system. We talked about that with the pre-pregnancy and the birth plan, but in that first month, you are going to have so many different changes going on and to make sure that you have people around you that can help you, even if it's taking the baby to change them or someone that can come help you do some of the things that you couldn't do before, maybe help you with some of the things around the house that you don't have the time to because you're spending time with your baby Really set yourself up with a supportive system, your partner, family, friends, to help you reach whatever those goals are for yourself. So I hope today that you found at least one tip that really will help you succeed in breastfeeding. Um, I know some of these are from my personal experience and a lot of them I've used in my practice. So with that, I wanna say, have a wonderful day.